Hey, what's up, what's up, everybody? All right, this is Chef Gilbert again. And um, we're going to be talking about this uh, weekly list. All right. All right, let's see what's going on here. All right, so first of all, Happy New Year's to everybody. Merry Christmas. Hopefully everybody had a great time uh, these holidays and spent it with family. Um, but uh, now we just got to get back to this new year. Hopefully everybody had an amazing year. And even though it's been rough with, with this whole downtrend, uh, we got to look forward to a whole new year and a whole new change uh, of everything, right? Uh, in reality, though, we're still going to have to follow this downtrend in the market. So for now, uh, everything is still bearish and we're still looking for some potential, um, you know, potential upside, potential more uh, continuation to the downside as well. So either way, um, what, what's what been going on the past few weeks, as we can see here, here's the uh, all time high. Here's the first time we actually rejected. And then here's where we confirmed a trend line the trend for the rest of the year, basically, and that is considered a yearly trend line. On top of that, we came here uh, a couple weeks back, uh, probably like last month or the beginning of the month, sorry, and we just couldn't hold. There was some FOMC, there was uh, a catalyst here with some numbers uh, that just ended up dropping it back down and added more volume and aggressiveness uh, to that yearly downtrend. Normally, when there's a rejection of a, of a trend line like this, it continues to see lower lows. In this case, we're kind of stalling right here in this little area, um, which is a good sign. Okay, uh, still we have more to go and there is still more time uh, for these markets to develop in many ways. But either way, the expectation of a rejection like this is aggressive and it's we're looking for new a new low, okay? It's not gonna happen overnight. It's not gonna happen in one week, even though it's possible. Uh, it can definitely happen in three weeks or four weeks uh, within the next month and just continue to make lower lows. By that, I mean it's because of the characteristics and the fact that it's a trend line, it can continue to go further down. So this is huge, right? That's a big rejection combined with the uh, resistance and the trend line at the same time, combined with all the data and FOMC. Uh, so a lot of stuff is still looking negative. Um, but the good thing is that the IV in general for many stocks is not that high, which is a really good sign. Uh, so this, the natural uh, target and reaction of something that drops down like this, drops down, drops down, makes a new lower low. So basically looking for 34 or even lower than 35, which 35 was where we kind of like bottomed out um, on this specific trend until we reached the trend line on the yearly Okay, uh, but this is what's going on. So what I'm specifically going to be looking for, okay, whether it's this week or next week or in the next couple of weeks or in the next month, um, what I want to see is for these levels to hold. I don't want it to drop any more further than 38, okay? That's how simple I'm going to keep it because what this shows, it shows um, wicks right here. And then wicks right here at the bottom, right? So just kind of pointing out something specifically is that, yes, we do have a bearish trend. Yes, we're still seeing a lot of negative reactions. Uh, a lot of stocks are breaking down. Some are changing trends and they're coming breaking down. Uh, something like EMPH and potentially MCD, McDonald's. Some of these tickers are way up there, are looking like they're going to start turning around uh, to the downside. Uh, just to keep following the sentiment with the market in general. Tech is beat down so bad. Airlines are beat down. Uh, financials are still holding strong, uh, but there's a lot going on. Either way, uh, what I want to see here is for 38 to just kind of hold balance out. I, I want to see pressure below this trend line, and I want to wait till this actual trend line breaks and gets a proper retest, right? A proper retest is what's going to, provide for us a bullish reversal until that happens everything is still bearish okay so you can short tops you can swing puts i mean things like that but make sure that you're not buying at the bottom make sure you're buying on a massive green candle and your stop loss is right above so um so just an example like what what do i want to see right i don't care how aggressive it gets here this is kind of like the type of pressure that i want to see and then that huge breakout that happens this way and then the retest that will happen like this, 
And then once that retest happens, the next uh, phase will be, you know, something like this. Okay, so that's how you're going to look for the reversal um, for something to break above and then something to come back down that's going to confirm that, hey, you know, we're going to be changing trend. Until that happens, it doesn't really matter uh, what goes on because, every, like I said, everything is still bearish um, and a lot of tickers are just getting beat down, you know, to a pulp, basically. All right. As a day trader, it doesn't really matter. Uh, what's going on in the big picture because you're going to be in and out of your trade within five, 10 minutes. Some of you guys trade on the one minute, which you're in and out. So you're like, I'll take my 20% and I'm done, which is cool. All right. Uh, but this is all I'm looking for. I just showed you exactly what I'm going to look for in the next couple of months. It's a new year. So I want to see how things are going to develop uh, when it comes to investors investing in companies. Okay. That's the difference. Um, but that's it. That's all I got for you guys. Uh, any Any number for me, if we are over uh, 39, uh, 39.20, I am bullish. Anything below 38, I am extremely bearish. But I am not buying these bottoms, okay? Uh, I am going to wait for the bullish side to come in. I'm going to be very patient because I think the risk to reward, risk to reward to the upside is a lot better than the downside. Some of you may say that we still have room to come all the way down. Well, Yes, but again, I'm a day trader and I'm just looking for the reversal and the buildup of accumulation. Uh, until then, if we get down here, then for sure I'll buy more shares um, and keep building, okay? So, but plain and simple. Uh, but that's all I'm looking for. Take it day by day. If you're a day trader, if you're an investor, um, you know, buy something that you personally see value in and not what anybody else sees value in. Uh, but uh, let's uh, look at a couple of tickers that... Uh, uh, seem very interesting uh, to me. And uh, let's go with the first one. The first one is going to be meta. Now, one thing that I like to look for is looking for strength and I like to look for weakness, mainly because I am more of a bullish trader than I am a bearish trader. And uh, I like looking for reverses to the upside because what happens when you get accumulation breaking out, you get public participation phase, which creates a nice potential swing trade to the upside. So every time you guys see me post anything like this or talk about anything that goes sideways, it's called accumulation. The accumulation is the built up of pressure. And once it pops, it creates momentum to the upside that can give you a great opportunity to swing something to the upside. Now, I just want to show you, like, look how big this range is. Look at the pressure that's being built here. Meta is over 120. So again, I'm going to repeat this, the same thing that I always do every single time. I don't care if it's at 120.30. 120, 40, 120, 50, 121. If we are above 120, I don't care where we're at up here. Is it still a long? Yes, it is long over 120. My target is going to be right here around 125, 125, 50, all the way to 132, 132, uh, 50 area. And uh, that's my target. That's the public participation phase that I want to see. Uh, basically, I want to see something like this. This is your public participation phase, like this, uptrend, uh, pullback, uptrend, pullback, uptrend, a staircase pattern, however you want to call it, your ABC pattern to the upside, your Fibonacci retracement to the upside, whatever you all want to call it, uh, but just know that if people buying um, the dips on a, uh, on a potential uptrend, okay? Uh, but this is what I'm looking for, Meta, over 120. Now, if it starts breaking down below 115.50, then I'll start thinking bearish and then I'll start thinking, okay, the accumulation turned into distribution phase and then we're going to be breaking down. Okay. Uh, but that's what I'm looking for meta. The next one is going to be PayPal. I've, I've been watching PayPal for months and months ever since we came down here. Uh, a couple of times I was able to short it. A couple of times I was able to uh, swing trade. I uh, got stopped out on a few uh, swing trades. I had calls actually, uh, I think down here I had calls or, one of these I had calls and I got stopped out again. I got stopped out down here again. Uh, but now, like, look at it. Look at this is what I'm talking about, that when we have accumulation, we go sideways, drop back down, snap back inside, drop down, snap back inside, close above. And then here is your proper retest. Boom. So here's your breakout. Here's your retest. Here's your confirmation. The next one is going to be here. And then we're going to look for another high. 
and then the next one would be around here, and then we'll look for another high. So that's how you want to look at it. You want to look at a nice staircase pattern and be able to identify how something may potentially move. So I am looking basically for a dip buy on PayPal. If we hold 70, 50, or even 70, below 70, I don't want it. Uh, any any day, whether it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, we go above 70, I am bullish. Uh, below it, I don't really want to touch it. I just want to let it accumulate with the market and show some type of strength. But that's kind of what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the continuation of this potential public participation phase, okay? Uh, the next one is going to be GS. GS is a financial, basically with the financial Goldman Sachs. Um, nice little tight pattern right here, nice little squeeze. I'm sure you guys can see it. Here you go. Um, so basically what I'm looking for is 345. I'm going to use a solid number, 345 all the way to 350. We start breaking down below 340 and 330, 930. I'm going to ride it all the way down because technically we're kind of in the middle of nowhere. We have um, we have like a little area right here. I uh, just pointed that out. And then we have that distribution phase that happened here. And, and then here we kind of have like no structure. We've been, we trended all the way from earnings all the way just up, just randomly. We didn't even trade that. Um, but this is like the next little bottom here. I mean, unless we go here. So it would be 330 from 340 to 330, 345 to 350 or even higher. That's kind of what I'm looking for to play on GS. We break up or break down, whichever one comes first, I'm okay with. Uh, the next one is going to be Disney. Disney is, oh gosh, this this stock is so beat down. Um, I think anything below 90, in my honest opinion, it's more of an investor's world and they're going to buy it down here below 90. Below 90 for a company that's been strong for years and years and years, um, even with the innovation thir during COVID, uh, even though they withheld and withstood the beatdowns of COVID, you know, the the financial statements and all that stuff being read and, you know, losing money, they are still a great company, in my opinion. Um, so anything below 90 bucks is kind of a steal for me, uh, of course, in my opinion. Uh, in these levels, uh, like I said, I am not looking to short Disney. I am actually looking for uh, long plays on Disney. But just to show you how clear it looks down here. Now, it could drop to 80 for sure. Uh, or even further down to 60 or 50. But again, I, I personally think it's a steal. Um, but anyways, it, it it's a weird pattern down here. Um, but overall, like what I see here, it's a slowdown. So just kind of want to point this out. Look how big this little range is. So we're we're trading from like 88.60 um, down to like 84, I would say. Okay. And uh, I just, I'll take it long over 88 if it breaks. If this builds a little uh, accumulation here, let's just, just say it does this. Let's just say it does that, right? Let's just say it does something like this and it breaks over 88. Then I'm going to look for long plays, all right? Um, you know, let, letting it develop, basically. Is keep, keeping your eyes on Disney. Keeping your eyes on maybe upgrades or downgrades or any type of catalyst that can move Disney. Uh, would be pretty amazing. Just keep up with it. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Um, you don't necessarily have to take it for a day trade or a swing trade. Just keep your eyes on it and uh, look for some good strong volume. Look for strength while the market is red, uh, and also look for a big move when the market is green. So just keep alerts on this and consider this a accumulation between 84 and 88. All right. Uh, the next one is going to be CRM. Uh, I'm not much of a big fan of the company in itself, uh, but yeah, like I said, the charts sometimes are just amazing. And this is almost similar to PayPal, okay? Uh, the fact that we've downtrended like crazy, like a lot of fluctuations here in between 165 and like 130, I say well, like 137. And then finally, we decided to trade sideways here. And then like I said, look, here is your accumulation, okay? Here is the break above, and then here is the retest. So what's next? We're looking for this to hold and continue like this. That's kind of what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that public participation phase for it to just trend. Of course, with the healthy market, okay? Uh, so I'm just looking for that. If you wanted to be a little more technical, uh, then you can draw this little trend line here and just make sure that it continues to stay above that, all right? Very, very simple here. Uh, Amazon, Google. 
I don't got much to say about these. I just know that they're at great freaking deals. Um, nice little trend line break. It's either going to be respected or it's going to change. It's going to change trend right here at 84 and go back up, or it's going to just continue to trend back down, down to 80. How low it can it go? Who knows? Uh, stocks do whatever they want, right? Uh, Google is the other one. Like I said, here's a nice trend line. Just draw that, break above or break below, whichever one comes first. Uh, you want to make sure that you have multiple alerts, that the market is on your side, a uh, good volume on a lot of the big names, and um, things are looking good. All right. So just remember those two things on Amazon and Google. Uh, the next one is going to be IBM. IBM is a small ticker. That's uh, a pattern here being developed. Here is your downtrend. Here is your squeeze right here. And this is more like a symmetrical triangle. We're either going to break here or break here. It's either going to break Monday or Tuesday, whichever one of these comes first. Monday, it can stay flat in here. And then Tuesday, just have a random pop or drop. Um, or on Wednesday, it can just pop or drop, whichever one. I mean, it can do whatever it wants. Uh, but yeah, draw that pattern and uh, follow that. And then your target is just let it go. And your target, again, just let it ride, right? Either one, whichever one comes first. Uh, the next, the last one that I do have for you guys is BABA. Uh, the one thing that I do want to mention here and let you guys know is that it's always a high risk when trading Chinese stocks. Number one reason for that is because the Chinese markets are open uh, after hours while well, everybody's sleeping. Maybe some of you are not. But either way, that stock will move without us, okay? Meaning that BABA is going to keep on going and we are only... We are waking up to either a huge gap down or a huge gap up. So that'll take away from the pattern in itself. Now, if we open inside here on Monday, uh, then for sure you can trade this and it would be pretty awesome to see. But sometimes that's not the case. Okay, sometimes this thing will probably open like down here. I mean, we may open up way up here. I mean, who knows? It's just a random thing that we never know. Uh, but if we open inside here, uh, just keep in mind that we do have these trends. Uh, trend lines that can break up or down uh, that can lead for a good day trade um, for a Chinese stock. But yeah, keep that keep that there. Draw that pattern. If you don't have it, draw it. Just grab the past couple of days and that's your little squeeze. It's probably going to squeeze tomorrow or Tuesday. Um, and then look at Baidu, look at JD, uh, look at all the other Chinese stocks that you guys have. Uh, but I did mention MCD. Okay, now I want to mention something about uh, MCD here. The fact that, like I said earlier, when we build accumulation, sometimes it becomes uh, distribution. Distribution because we broke to the downside. So here's a perfect example of breaking up and down, right? This is perfect. Look at this. Okay. See the inside, how we're just going sideways. Here we popped. Here we came down. We retested and we failed and came back inside and made a lower low. Here again, we tried to break up. We came in here and retested right here on this green candle. Uh, we failed again and we dropped and we dropped again. But again, like we, we've traded sideways for so long between 269 all the way to 275 that now it's just trending to the downside because all this accumulation couldn't hold it up. This thing was making all time highs while the market is red. It's a lot of strength, but even with that much strength, it still couldn't go on higher and higher and higher. Now what it's doing is doing the opposite effect because it this became a supply versus an accumulation of demand the accumulation of supply now is dropping it down. So now it's having the same uh, pattern as you can see here. And it's a drop base drop again. So as long as we're below 265, I'm just gonna give you the whole number 265 and just keep on writing it down, right? Where's the next stop? We literally don't have one. Uh, well, it's all the way down to like 255, 250, maybe 260 by whole numbers, 260, 265. 255, 250, 245, and you know, so on and so forth. That's how you would like um would trail and follow a position like this that's coming on down. Um, but yeah. Uh the other one is ENPH. This thing actually showed some aggressive selling the past couple of days, uh weeks actually. Look how much accumulation this has had. Okay. That's your accumulation right there. From that top of three, I'm gonna just say three. 322 down to 372 and we're finally right below it um so the way that i see is it's a huge distribution phase try to accumulate down here try to go up but it couldn't um 
and then it finally dropped down here. So this many buyers versus this many sellers, we could potentially just keep on trending down back to like 220 or even 200. So this is what I would be targeting. Definitely, I would be aware of this, uh, but I'm not too afraid of this just because this is like, it's like having five buyers here versus like 50 sellers over here. The 50 sellers will overtake these five buyers and drop it all the way down here where we have at least, you know, more buyers. Down here. But just an example of things that um, are potentially trend, trend changing to the downside um, while this market continues to trend down, um, you know, just giving you guys a little more of a put play, a risk to reward play, um, you know, just so you guys can see. Uh, what this stuff is doing. As for oil, oil is kind of in between. It's kind of back to its normal levels as it has been in the past. Normal levels are here. Normal lo levels are there. Um, so we're back down again. Uh, not not much volatility going on with oil anymore. It's just moving uh, on its own now and doing its own thing. As for the dollar, if you guys been following, you guys should know that when we saw this, we created a little supply. And ever since then, it's been trending now. So it still has room to go down, guys. Um, I think it go down to like 100. Um, definitely look for a slow grind down to 100, probably all the way to 97. Um, so just waiting for this to patiently drop down. As for the Wix, um, nothing going on. We're still below 25 and we're around the 20 area. So once we start going below 20, things will go back to normal. And uh, not a lot of fear in the market. Just keep in mind that there's no fear in the market. Trading is back to normal. IV is not so high, uh, not even on the on the days of being a uh, catalyst. And um, yeah, it, it's a lot of uh, decent place. And of course, the trend is down. So yes, puts and calls, uh, but mainly a lot of uh, puts. Uh, what's going on with Tesla, guys? I have no idea. Uh, I know there's a lot going on with this thing. There's a lot of news. Just whatever you guys do, be careful, guys. Yeah. There has been tons of volume ever since uh, we broke down this like 170. From here down to here, there's been aggressive volume, as you can see. Okay, all the volume bars are very, very heavy down here. So there's a lot of people who got stopped out, a lot of people who are buying, a lot of people who are selling. What I'm going to tell you guys is do not short these bottoms, okay? Have fun, but make sure you trail your, your position. At any point in time, this thing can reverse on you real fast and just start trending up with no freaking... No reason, no pattern whatsoever. It'll just go. Tesla is a t uh, ticker that has a uh, like a like a cult following, and it does its own thing. So uh, it's gonna be all eyes on Tesla in the next uh, couple of weeks, I guess. It, I mean, anything below a hundred bucks, if it goes down to double digits, I, in my personal opinion, I think a lot of people will buy it. Um, I, I think it's a steal having Tesla at a hundred bucks a share. Um, but yeah, no, that's kind of all I have for you guys. Uh, other than that, hopefully you guys um, took note of those stickers, uh, Meta, PayPal, GS, Disney, CRM, Amazon, Google, IBM, and Baba. Other than that, guys, um, have some fun and uh, take some cautiously day trades whether you're bullish or bearish, make sure you're trolling everything, guys. Don't get biased just because of what people are saying on Twitter or or MySpace or wherever you guys are reading your data from. Uh, follow the charts, respect the charts, and respect yourself as a day trader as well, okay? Um, but yeah, that's all I got for you guys. Hopefully the market doesn't crash this year some more, and hopefully we can see some reversals, maybe even mid-year or whatever, or even tomorrow, who knows? Um, but yeah, uh, have a good one. Stay green. If you guys need anything, let us know. Uh, we're at Conservative Collectors, and we're here to help you guys uh, with whatever you guys need. All right, you guys have a good one, and let's start this new year with uh, a green note. All right, have a good one.